Welcome to the Corrective Consciousness, episode 74, the podcast about our lives and love of pop culture. I'm your host, Vise the Bold, and this is... Lotus Prince. And Old Man Stompy. Back again. Where you been? Eh, somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's, that is it's, true. It's, it's not, not the same Japan trip. I, I know it feels like everybody's been to Japan. <laughs> except for me. And except and, for me. And Lotus. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, everybody. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I, I'm wondering if uh, Lotus uh, will finally make the trip with us, uh, me and my girlfriend, next next year. I would love that. Would That'd you be, be down great. for that? Uh, if, awesome. if it if it coincides with my schedule, sure. Um, fuck your schedule and fuck everything. That is a good point. All right. That doesn't good. sound like a long invitation. <laughs> <laughs> you're coming with us and you're going to like it. <laughs> nice. All right, well, let's get this uh, road on the show. Uh, well, hold, wait, 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 hold on. You said, you said that wrong. Oh, uh, yeah. road on the snow. It just snowed here in the Northeast. Okay, so Old Man Stompy, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, so uh, I know that my my uh, significant other on the last on last week's podcast discussed at great detail the number of bubble games that we've been just playing. Just how significant is she? Is she? Uh, at least ten significant figures. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you mentioned significant figures, <laughs> like like, like or, in or, or or as they say overseas, figures of merit. Oh really? <laughs> yes, actually. That's amazing. That's actually pretty cool it's very british <laughs> i would say so yeah so yeah so we've both been playing um animal crossing pocket camp uh, as opposed to that other piece of shit game that just came out in beta for the ps4 <laughs> nobody should fucking play yeah the the monster hunter thing uh from from what i've heard is it that bad no, you know the, the joke. Old man Stumpy always shits oh. on monster. No, the, the funny thing is, from what I saw on Twitter, like people were getting hyped from previews, and then they played the beta and were even more hyped. Apparently, this is going to be oh, a great. Wow. Ga- apparently, it's like a faster paced game, which, like, I I don't play Monster Hunter anyway, but like, it is kind of slow. Apparently, this is faster paced, and people are really getting behind it. Well, I, I... They're, they're they're wrong. It's bad, <laughs> and they should feel bad for liking it. For, with the previous couple iterations of it, I've like, like casually liked it, but uh, not enough to like get far in the game or anything. So I I hope that the interface and like game itself is not nearly as annoying as it traditionally is, and I I hope that this is like the at the point where I actually will enjoy it. So I I, I hope Monster Hunter finally turns a curve where I'm like yes now now I'm good with it. So. I mean, the game was already a pretty big hit uh, for the 3DS, although yeah. all the Monster Hunter games combined did not sell as much as Animal Crossing New Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> not not even the original PS2 release? I can't believe it. Well, I meant all the 3DS Monster Hunter games. Oh, 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 oh. Of, of, of course, there are also comparable Animal Crossing games from those generations, including the N64 one that never came out in America. Well, yeah. The barrier to entry to an Animal Crossing game is much, much lower than a complicated-ass cryptic like bullshit game like like and, <laughs> like and, monster and, hunter and, and severely punishing too yeah like, monsters like, will beat the shit out of you <laughs> you only know how to play that game if somebody teaches you how to play it which is ridiculous like and like or, and, to be fair that that's never really stopped the souls games from having tremendous success and like launching basically their own genre in, yeah in the states I mean, so it, those games are bullshit too, but it's great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, I'll be fair. Both both games, both both um series, Monster Hunter and Dark Souls, uh, and the Souls like, like they they're punishing, but they use uh, uh they use death as a teaching mechanic. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so it keeps you coming back for more. Like in Monster Hunter, the idea is that you die because you messed up some 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 um mechanic of the fight and the idea is you're supposed to like i did play it seriously it's a joke that i that i, I hate the game but it's really more that i just don't have time to like dedicate yeah. to playing yeah monster played, hunter uh, is really time consuming yeah i've certainly like watched a lot of it and i played for a decent amount when it came out enough to get myself a couple of armor sets and like you are supposed to like a- approach every fight very meticulously and usually uh, except for the time limit you can learn a fight well enough to beat most of the monsters if you're very cautious and as you continue to like learn the fight you you find holes and you learn all the in and you you uh get a hang of your fighting style you find all the holes in the monster's pattern you learn its behavior you learn where it like naps it's very intricate and it really rewards um the kind of in-depth play like the kind of commitment that the game asks of you you know 
Like it's it's worth it if you play it that much. It's just that I, I like to say that it's like a thirty a really good thirty hour game wrapped inside like a four hundred hour game. Yeah, because that that's the thing. You can just keep going. Like you can beat the game, but you could just keep fighting harder and harder monsters and getting cooler and cooler armor and just go on forever. Right. So so yeah, I have ignored Monster Hunter World when it came out. I played Animal Crossing Pocket Camp and I got about two weeks of enjoyment out of it, which is about I think all the game deserves. <laughs> Certainly, that's like all the content they put in the game so far. And now it's just a, a daily checking game, like a lot of mobile games. Um, but that's, I think, par for the course. Like, usually the whole point of a mobile game is to, like, provide very little content and then gate it behind making you wait for that little bit of content. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, You seem to have a high tolerance for that. I do not. Well, I, I wouldn't say that I have a high tolerance. It's more like, it doesn't, co- like, the cost of entering the game, if you haven't been playing it, is so low that it doesn't feel like much of an obligation. Okay. You know, like, like people talk about quitting Pokemon Go, and it's like, how do you quit Pokemon Go? You play Pokemon Go by, when opening, it up like on, it. When you, by opening it up on your phone, you know, and tapping on the screen. Like, you, how do you quit that? That's like saying, that's like saying I quit, like, being in a room, or I quit, like, like turning my computer on. Like, <laughs> I guess they're saying like I quit playing it every day. Uh, is yeah, what they're and saying. that's that's certainly fair. But uh, and and you could just not play the game at all and say that you quit it. It's just you weren't doing anything in the first place. It's not like quitting. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not, like, it's not like it's not like quitting smoking, which is actually hard. It's not difficult to quit Pokemon Go or like any of these mobile games. Yeah. It kind of feels like it though. I mean, like uh, a lot of them have a very addictive nature. Um, yeah, it's it's true. They're designed to like get you addicted and to keep you like waiting for that next hit when when your stamina refreshes. And um, certainly, the business model, like a lot of old arcade games, is built on mining money from players. Yeah, uh, and then and then it gets out of hand, and then you're turning illusions on the street. It's awful to mm. to get money. It's awful. Yes. You know, you know, you know this from personal experience. <laughs> should, I look for your, should I look for your mugshot in Atlantic City? <laughs> There's too many to count there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I got my two weeks worth out of out of uh, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. On the on the side, I've been playing Super Mario Odyssey. Still, I am approaching the 500 moon count, which was in the last new set of content unlocks, uh, and it is kind of living up to expectation. Where, like I said, like exploring the worlds and picking up all the moons and finding things hidden in every corner is really exceptional but it's a the lot idea of fun. Of, the idea of actually having to like complete a level is is not quite as much fun like knowing yeah. like any any level where i'm missing like three of the purple coins is just super annoying yeah no. it, it reminds me of uh donkey kong 64 where you're missing like 10 regular bananas it's like ah crap yeah <laughs> search the Pretty entire like, level <laughs> there's no radar for that nope <laughs> So actually, actually, there is a. This is actually a little bit frustrating. There is a, a way to detect which purple coins that you're missing, but it requires use of an amiibo. And uh, uh, I'm like, I'm a little bit opposed to that because which amiibo is it? Uh, it's the one of the any Bowser amiibo will tell oh, okay. will tell you. So because all the Bowser amiibos are functionally the same. Uh, okay. From from a Nintendo standpoint, uh, so it's one. They, so like they the, all have the was, same chip in them, essentially. right? Yeah. Yeah. Or or it's it's the same chip loaded with the same data because you can use an RFID reader like loaded with amiibo data to to spoof it basically. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think there's like an action replay kind of thing out there like that. Yeah, and people take the chips out and they give and they put them in cards like the Animal Crossing cards so you can use them to swipe like uh, it's much more convenient than carrying around a pocket full of like like giant plastic figures all over. Yeah, the place. that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's pretty neat. I mean, that's what I appreciate about the Shovel Knight Amiibo, is that you can use it in the box. So, in principle, if you really wanted to, it's actually the only one that doesn't have the shielding on the bottom that prevents yeah, you from that using is weird. it in the box. Like, how did that even happen? I'm, I'm sure it was on purpose. Um, so, like, in principle, you could just go to the store with your 3DS and, like, swipe the Shovel Knight Amiibo and unlock whatever it unlocks in the game. Or you could go with, like, your Xenoblade and swipe it every day for tokens. <laughs> Uh, but but you didn't you didn't hear that here. You should definitely go buy Shovel Knight and the Shovel Knight amiibo, and the Plague Knight and King Knight and Specter Knight amigos when they come out uh, next year or whatever. Oh, uh, were they an, were they announced? I think they're expected to come out. I, I forget if they were officially announced, but I think they're effectively guaranteed. I guess it's not surprising because they're the ones with their own games. That that mm-hmm. reminds me, I I just recently got the latest uh, Fire Emblem amiibos, the uh, Tiki and. Uh... What's Krom. the other one? Crom, yeah, yeah, uh, because they actually have 
uh, like a decent function in the mm. Fire Emblem Warriors games. Um, right. uh, the uh, they actually like unlock something special, uh, whereas the other ones just kind of not really. Yeah, so. I, I'm I'm always on the fence about that. Like I I don't like the idea of the amiibos actually being DLC. Um, yeah, that that they like, kind of bugs me. Because like like I don't like. Yeah, I like everything that the Amiibos unlock to be available. Like, everything in the in um, Mario Odyssey that you can acquire with Amiibos, like, in some cases, like the Bowser Amiibo, it will tell you how to get it easier, but everything can be accessed through playtime and coin grinding. Yeah, that, without, that, that I'm yeah. okay with, or giving you, like, extra lives, or, like, in a Zelda game, like, more arrows or whatever, but, like, unlocking unique content kind of bugs me if it's if it's an amiibo thing like i don't want to uh, buy a shelf's worth of dlc yeah uh, in breath of the wild the amiibo stuff is i'm kind of on the fence about it because the amiibos can unlock uh weapons that are cooler than any weapons you can find in the game but they're breakable so you can't just keep them forever anyway it's just a, a short-term power boost we, yeah but get, you can reuse them <laughs> And oh, get you, can them get, again. you can get Epona too. That's pretty much the biggest one. Also, those, by the way, Breath of the Wild amiibos in particular are freaking gigantic. Yeah. Well, no. The only only really the Guardian is. Um, mm -hmm. All the rest of them are pretty normal. Oh well, yeah. Like well, yeah. Just Link or just Zelda. But that, that Guardian one is ridiculous. It's cool as so hell. There, there are like, also a lot of Zelda franchise yeah. amiibos. Like I think it's second to the Mario ones because they had the 25th anniversary and 30th anniversary figures. Yeah. Yeah, they also have um like the special amiibos that came out like uh, the Twilight Princess uh, Wolf Link with Midna. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. that that unlocks uh Wolf Link in Breath of the Wild, which I think is a pretty pr really good uh uh mm. incentive to get that one. Uh and also you can get the Twilight uh costume as well. Oh nice. Um, yeah, so uh there there's a number of things that that are in that game. Uh, they just came out with the champions. I I, I don't know what they do yet. Uh, probably refill your uh, your your specials from each well, of the it's, guardians. It's related to the DLC that's coming out now, so I, I haven't checked to see if it actually unlocks some function in the new DLC. Okay, because like, I, the DLC I, I really is, like those guys. Is like, <laughs> it's, it's themed after the champions. You know, you have these like really interesting characters. Uh, that they introduce in the game, and like all of them are dead before the game even starts, so you never actually get to play as them or with them. It's it's like the story in Breath of the Wild. Like the game is fantastic, but the story um, is so much less interesting than what probably happened like a hundred years before the game actually started. Well, it's it's kind of like Dark Souls. Like the stuff that's going on is pretty cool, but like mm -hmm. finding out what happened is insane because a lot right. apparently went down. <laughs> Well, I, I like that the game mythologizes it, so it like builds it up so to be something way epic, and you you bu you build it up in your head as to what happened, and you have like all these past relationships that are inferred, yeah, uh, like, by like very very good cutscenes that 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 hint at things but don't entirely explain mm -hmm. them, which is great. Yeah, right. And it adds it adds to the atmosphere of the game itself to have all the stuff that the really. All, all the happy stuff happened in the past. It makes the atmosphere more, more melancholic. I think it adds to the. I think it adds to the game overall. But it's a lot it, more it, loss, yeah. and you feel you you feel uh, the failure of of Zelda and Link um, mm. it, to to protect the world. Uh, that, that's that's such a like a great thing that it can make you feel like that. Uh. It's it's kind of a, like the principle of, of being a heel in wrestling that not everything in storytelling is about immediate gratification and like getting exactly what you want. Some of it is about denying that to the to the viewer to make it worth more when you finally get it, you know, and to have that payoff at the end be that much more triumphant. Absolutely, I I, I kind of um, uh, like in that uh, probably my, one of my favorite scenes in cinema with with denial. Is um, the uh, scene in Saving Private Ryan where uh, the American journalist like just cannot muster up the strength to save his friend who is being stabbed to death by a Nazi, and and they they basically they bas it, he you know basically the guy just the Nazi just walks away from the fight uh, un unscathed because the guy is too much of a of a coward to go and save his friend. And it's like the entire time you're like, go and save your friend. God damn it! Like, what? What the hell? Like, I, I know you're afraid, but Jesus! Like, <laughs> it's a it's an important philosophical discussion. Like, games in general tend to lend themselves to people who really believe that anything you want in life you can overcome by 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 effort. Like, a game is a solved problem. It is not like you can't a game can't be unbeatable. 
uh, you know, I mean, some games are, are designed to be unbeatable, like, by, by definition, but that's a very small quantity of, like, troll games. Most yeah. games have a, a fixed set of actions that always lead to victory. So that's... to add, yeah, to add loss and to add player denial to a game is quite difficult, and this is one of the ways to do it. That uh, You weren't here when I discussed this, but uh, that's why I like the ending of Far Cry 4. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually no good way, like, to go except for the the Easter egg ending, which is to not do anything at all. Um, mm-hmm. Like, when, when <laughs> Pagan, Min, Pagan Min tells you, hey, wait right here, and yeah, we will I've, go... I've, yeah, I've, I've heard this one. He tells you to wait 15 minutes, and if you do, he just comes back and the game is over. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well, not only is it over, but you actually get accomplished what you wanted to do in the game mm-hmm. to begin with, which was scatter your mother's ashes and pay respect to her, which he allows you to do, and then he gives you Kirat, uh, which, because... It, it was your mother's like like mm-hmm. he, he he doesn't want control over kirat he never really did uh and, and and but like if you end up leaving like the game wants you to or like what what normal game conventions teach you to mm-hmm. um while while you know the other guy other guys being tortured you set off a chain of events of being uh, basically where you make your own character into a homicidal maniac and all uh the entire country is is vying for power over the state, and none of none of the leadership is good. Like none of the proposed leadership is good. Like none of your uh, teammates are good. Like every everybody's a piece of shit, and you are a piece of shit for wanting it. <laughs> so like mm-hmm. it, it's it's great in that respect. Yeah. All right. So other than otherwise, besides Mario, I, I actually started watching Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I guess I fell into the nostalgia trap. I remember I watched um, Battle of the Gods, the like resurgence of Dragon Ball, the movie that came out a little while ago, like several years ago at this point. Uh, and I, I remember thinking like the movie ended with on a very optimistic note when I never really expected there to be any more Dragon Ball Z, like of any kind. Like you have this fight where Goku fights his god. Um, and he att- attains a new Super Saiyan form. And at the end, all of a sudden, you know, this guy he fights is like, oh yeah, my mentor is much stronger than me. And also there's like 12 other universes in Dragon Ball. And like, there's all kinds of guys in those universes who are like way stronger. And it's like, are they trying? Are they trying to bring Dragon Ball back? Are they are they like curious to see if people will want to see all this stuff? Like, I, I thought like there were... There was, like, way too much Dragon Ball, like, near at the, at the end of the original series' life. Like, that was, series was supposed to end, like, four or five years before it actually did. And they went and continued and made, and made like, Akira Toriyama script a whole other arc after he killed off Goku for what he thought was the last time. And then they went ahead and made an entire other series, like, without his input. And that was supposed to be, like, the dark age of the franchise. So why are they trying to bring it back now? Is it just nostalgia, or do they really think they're going to give it an honest try this time? Uh, and it... Well, it turns out they did. Like, I was surprised to learn I hadn't really been following the anime, but it has like a hundred something episodes now. Yeah, it's been uh, a, it's, it's going for a while. Uh, and people I, and, generally and, like that show. Yeah, uh, I was I was I was impressed. I guess I guess this was quite earnest and not just a cash in. Not that Dragon Ball is that complicated to begin with, but they expect like the fights to be really satisfying and not just like a character learns a new power up or Goku makes a spirit bomb and beats the boss. Yeah, you know, like there's a little bit more, and like I've heard they've given the side characters of the series a lot more to do than they did in most of Dragon Ball Z, which is some, which is saying something because like that's like, good because except they Goku and Vegeta, yeah yeah and Krillin sort of existed and like Yamcha just doesn't count as a character and like mm-hmm. the Dragon Ball cast just doesn't exist. Krill, like, Krillin is good up until uh, up, up until Frieza saga. I mean, uh, like he 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 does a lot during the Namek saga, and then he does and then he we'll, does, and, yeah. and during the Frieza fight, he does a lot to damage Frieza in his uh, what second form. Yeah, he cuts um, off second form Frieza's tail, which is like that doesn't even make sense. Like, how powerful is that freaking disc of his? Yeah, I mean, he he does a good job, but then then he gets his ass kicked for the rest of the series. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. unfortunate. So it, 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 it is a it is a thing that aside from like Goku and Vegeta, nobody really does much of anything for almost the entirety of Dragon Ball after about the Frieza saga. Uh, and like slowly all the characters start retiring basically. Like Krillin yeah. becomes Krillin becomes a cop, Yamcha becomes a baseball player. Some of them die just That's because right, nothing yeah. for nothing for like them to do, really. <laughs> But, yeah. um, this... Like who's Boar at this point, you know? <laughs> yeah, but like, but like, I've been told that in the current tournament arc, even like Master Roshi has a KO, which is saying something. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, neat. So, so I'm looking forward to like watching the rest of it. It's pretty easy to find since it's licensed for official release in America. Like, I think yeah. Animation has it on their streaming site. Um, and I guess the last thing I'd like to add is that I, I I teased to you guys before this week that I would tell you 
uh, a particularly dire wrestling story because I had been reminded of it like earlier in the week, right after uh, I listened to the podcast you guys recorded, um, and that was the Katie Vick story. So, you guys ready for this? <laughs> go right ahead, man. I'm, I'm go. all for it. So I had been reminded of this because it happened in 2002, which was which was like the peak Vince McMahon. Like I don't give a shit about anything anymore. I just beat WCW. I'm the only game in town. I can do no wrong. I write the history books. Like I can do whatever I want. So they, you know, at that point there was no major competition to WWF. Uh, they had. They were in the middle of the Attitude Era, which meant they had made their money off of, like, really risque and bawdy wrestling television on top of good in-ring action. So they decided, like, now would be a good time to start, like, giving some of our characters backstories. Because to be quite frank, like, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage and Ric Flair, these guys don't really have backstories. They don't have, like, tragic comic book pasts. They're just... No, they just showed up one day and started badass. Yeah, yeah. So they wanted to give, like, so this is like the early 2000s, they wanted to give some of their characters, like, edgy 2000 backstories. And oh, Vince no. McMahon has like, has, like, no fucking filter whatsoever. Like, this never actually happened, otherwise it might have been the, the worst wrestling angle in history, but he always wanted to do an incest angle with one of his kids, or both of his kids. And what? it what? was <laughs> disgusting. Well, I mean, Vince McMahon... He Nobody was, wants that. Yeah, what the... I mean, Vince is, like, pretty fucked up. Like, he he gave a Playboy interview a while ago where he confessed to being, like, abused by both his mother and his stepfather in North Carolina for, like, as a kid, up until he was 13 and he ran away to join, to become a wrestling promoter, basically. He joined up with his father, who he had never met, in Maine, who was the head of the WWF at the time, and took a job in one of their local promotions and then rose up the ranks to become probably the most famous wrestling promoter in history but like he has that really fucked up backstory unto himself and i guess he projects it onto everybody else so nobody wants to see that well yeah. it, well thankfully they didn't do that otherwise that would be so this thing katie vick is almost universally agreed upon as like the worst and most tasteless thing the wwf has ever done on top of even me i'm giving birth to a hand yeah <laughs> So I, just, I got a hand the door. Brilliant, <laughs> ah, very funny. I, I heard that. That's not funny at all. <laughs> so this is something that came out from just guys drunk on a plane pitching ideas to each other on what kind of backstory they could give to to like some of their characters. And it's like, who don't we know anything about? Well, it turns out we don't know anything about Kane because Kane, when he debuted. You know, he uh, so like the guy who plays Kane, Glenn Jacobs, is extremely well spoken. He's super intelligent. He's actually running for mayor of Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh shit! Like like right now, he's a uh, he's he, I don't like his political views. He's a staunch libertarian. It's not really my thing. But he's very well spoken and he makes compelling arguments. He's much smarter than you'd ever think from watching him just be Kane and set people on fire. Well, it's like Dolph Lundgren. He's like a nuclear physicist, but like he's the bad guy in Rocky Four. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's just some hidden depths you wouldn't really ever expect from the guy. Um, so, so he for the first like couple of years basically never spoke. Uh, he, you know, he made his debut. He burst out of the cage, the Hell in a Cell, like choke slam, tombstone pile drive, the Undertaker. You know, walked away and and they gave Shawn Michaels the win in that match. And like he was just like a, a faceless, you know, voiceless like killing machine. It's pretty scary. Yeah, so they just like but they Jason. decided. <laughs> He needed extra baggage by giving him a backstory. And at the same time, there's this guy, Scott Vick, who was coming up through developmental and they wanted to give him a backstory too. So they started teasing this character, Katie Vick, like in vignettes, uh, like promoting this character, Scott Vick, who had someone named Katie. And they were going to debut them as a, as, a, as a pair or like have some story about her. But as it turns out, he, was, he sucked. He was horrible. Scott Vick was just terrible. So they never gave him a job. They released him, but they had all this this like material about Katie Vick they had to they had to to work with so somebody said you know in a plane a plane rider or like a, a, a cross country car ride or something that he would always regret that we should give Katie Vick the angle to Kane and so um Q you know sometime I think it was around May of 2002 Kane is actually tag team champion and uh, he's teamed with the Hurricane who's like this absolute nobody of a wrestler who has a superhero personality and he's the he's the heater for Kane. It's a long tradition in WWF that when a guy's like a monster in a tag team, they pair him with like a nobody, so that nobody gets like the crap kicked out of him. And then he does the hot tag to the monster, and the monster just cleans house. Because <laughs> otherwise, 
Otherwise, it would make like a two tag monsters. Team, yeah, would yeah. Be, otherwise, yeah. like yeah. like they used to do that for Andre the Giant. It keeps Andre the Giant from being overexposed if he only comes out once in a while just to beat up like four or five guys, you know, or or like the two guys of a tag team and then tag back out <laughs> because he's tired. Um, so they used that a lot to protect guys who were like monsters but who aren't good technical wrestlers. Um, so the Hurricane, um, he and Kane were scheduled to defend their title in a four-way match. So Kane comes out, and the Hurricane never comes out. It turns out he got attacked backstage by Triple H and Ric Flair, who were buddies at the time. Um, and Kane, he wins the match by himself. Wow. Because he's just that much of a monster. And... Against Triple H and Ric Flair? That's crazy. Well, no, so, so, so they, weren't, they weren't actually wrestling. In that oh. Match. They just revealed they were the ones who beat up the beat up. The okay. Hurricane. And so Triple H, he says, he's like, we know all about, like, I've got a word from your past I bet you never expected to hear. Then he's like... Katie Vick. <laughs> what? <laughs> and that's, that's basically how the episode ends. Uh, and so the next episode, Kane decides that he's going to talk about Katie Vick, which is completely unnecessary because Kane shouldn't talk at all. Yeah. Like, why is Kane talking? And so sure enough, like, Kane gets up, and it, I guess he's a face right now because he's getting attacked by Triple H. Triple H is always an asshole. Um, most of the time, as, as we know from wrestling isn't wrestling. <laughs> as I know from Blade Trinity... <laughs> Yeah, from a lot of stuff. He's an actual heel. <laughs> As I know from, like, previous events in real life. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like, shaming China to the point where, yeah, of ridiculousness. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, especially knowing what happened to her after she left WWF. Like, exactly, yeah. So, yeah, Triple H. So, I mean, part of this was knowing that, like, somebody pitched this angle, and Triple H had to have been on board the entire time, especially at that point he was in a relationship with Stephanie McMahon, I think they were actually legally married at that point and trying to have kids. Um, so there was no way he didn't like sign off on this angle before they decided to put it on television. So they had Kane, who was a monster, stand up and confess that when he was not a monster yet, before he like <laughs> before he like set the fire that killed his parents. When when he was working his a- average Joe job, yeah, uh, as, Joe as, Kane as, as as a seven foot tall, you know, yeah, Starbucks barista. <laughs> he he had he, he, he had a girlfriend named Katie Vick, and and he had a bit too much to drink that night, and they got into a car accident, and she died. Oh Jesus! And it's like this is so unnecessary. What? <laughs> like he's the good guy, and he was a drunk driver, and he killed his girlfriend. Like, who is supposed to think this is a good idea to put on television? And so Triple H comes out and he goes, No, that's not the whole story. We... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Like, like, we found your semen on Katie Vick. And it's like, what? Are you... I, w- I was seriously waiting for it to be like, she's alive in a cyborg or something. But like, the fuck is this? So I'm, so your I'm... your face is a rapist? Uh, an implied rapist? Like... He's, an imp- he's an implied necrophiliac. <laughs> Oh, oh, that. Oh. But, yes, also a rapist. So, so that wasn't bad enough for what? Triple H. That wasn't where it ended. Okay. Ne- next week, Triple H comes out again and says, we have footage of Kane. Wow. So, the audience is thinking, oh. What? You know, Why? The audience is thinking, oh, you know, we, you know, like, Kane got into this car accident and, and, like, he thought he was going to die, so he must have, like, like fucked Katie Vick while they were both dying, and then, and then he got saved. Like, that's what the audience has to picture. Because at least it makes... It makes Why did any of, of this need to happen? Why, like, I don't know. This was something that somebody wrote. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. Like, like we, are in, we are in full, like, like, give zero fucks mode right now. We have no competition. We can put whatever we want on television, and people have no Why? choice but to watch it. If because <sighs> that's because wrestling fans are really invested in wrestling and almost nothing else on television. So next week, Kane comes out and Triple H says, "I've got video footage Ugh. of the act." How? You, like how? A clip of <laughs> Triple H in a Kane mask, basically humping a mannequin in a casket. What? <laughs> like not even at the car crash site. At the actual funeral, Triple H is like very obviously in a Kane suit. Like, basically humping, very obviously, a mannequin. So, now, based on your description, this sounds dumb as hell. So, is this still horrific, or is this, like, goofy at this point? I mean, it's it's so beyond the pale that it can't help but be horrific. Okay. Like, there's nothing, like, funny about this at this point. And, and the week no. after that, 
Like, Triple H actually came out with a mannequin and made fun of people who were mad about the fact that they decided to put this on television. Uh... And, like... Hugh, like, the Hurricane came out, and he decided that he would film a segment where he put Triple H's mask on, like, a cardboard cutout of Triple H's face, and he said, like, this is footage of Triple H receiving an enema. So, like, anybody who, wa- <laughs> anybody who thought Triple H had it coming to him was treated to, like, two minutes of, like, a guy on on the Titan Tron, like, having stuff removed from his ass. God damn. Wear- wearing a Triple H mask, as if the necrophilia thing wasn't bad enough. We so- got a live fake enema, too. And, and then a uh, fake anal penetration. Uh, uh, and then God. someone else comes out wearing a fake hurricane mask and does something else with him. So <laughs> does it just keep happening? Th- that was basically the end of the angle. The okay. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, that's that's like if anybody thinks that that I mean, Vince McMahon is a genius wrestling promoter, you know, but but there are limits to his genius, and <laughs> like the quality of the writing. <laughs> Yeah, and and um, like good taste. Yeah, him and, him and a lot of the other guys, they hit a lot of success in the Attitude Era. They've made a lot of stars, but most of that has come like with a filter. So you know, there are a lot of guys in in entertainment, like George Lucas is another good example, who like when they're really invested in making art, can do it. You know, but when when all they care about is making money. You know, and and getting eyes on their product, like one of the old phrases in wrestling is that controversy creates cash. Mm. Um, that's why you often get guys who sell shirts uh, that that advertise like real life injuries they've inflicted on other wrestlers by accident, because that's what brings eyes to their product. Um, so, as much as we love wrestling, you can never forget like the background that it came from and what some of these guys put themselves through. Like that's notoriously the worst angle in wrestling history or like widely regarded as the worst angle in wrestling history certainly it's like an example of of how far the wrestling promoters are willing to go wait i'm 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 curious like is this still a thing or do they like retcon it i mean like like, like if, if you have to if you have to look up a bio on kane right now would that still be in there it certainly wouldn't be on the WWF webpage, but they have kind of negative continuity in WWF, where they rarely okay. pay attention to anything that happened more than, like, a month ago. Oh. So, I mean, I've told you they, like, Kane in his previous incarnations has been, like, the Christmas creature, and also yeah. Dr. And also Dr. Isaac Yankum, a dentist. Yankum? <laughs> yeah, that's just like Mick Foley, Foley had, like, three persona. Well, Mick yeah. Foley, like, he actually took those personas seriously. Like, Cactus Jack was supposed to be his hardcore persona. And when he comes out as Cactus Jack, like, Triple H... He, Triple H had a match against Cactus Jack, and he, like, shit his pants. Like, in the ring, figuratively. Because Cactus Jack is, like, is like Mick Foley when he's done being, like, a happy-go-lucky, like, yeah. man mind. You know, like, when he's yeah. done being himself, and he really wants to just, like, have a hardcore match and beat the shit out of somebody. Um, so, like, they treated that very seriously. Like, Kane, they make, like, offhand references about his previous personalities because they had, none of them have ever been anywhere near as popular as Kane. And, of course, like, Kane, like, he occasionally... They, they made a, a joke about this in one of the WWF Network shows because Kane, like, he joined Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon and his family in the Authority, like, and he, he became... They called him Corporate Kane. He put on a suit. He didn't wear his demon thing anymore. Yeah. And so it was funny to hear them announce, like, Corporate Kane. And so... Yeah. They, <laughs> And, and when he put the mask back on, he was the Demon Kane and also Corporate Kane. And they did a thing where, where, where like the Demon Kane kept coming out and beating up like some of the authority heels or some of the bad guys, and then, and then Corporate Kane would come out and pretend like he had no idea who the Demon Kane was. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> like great. They're, like they're different people. But they did a little a little joke segment where they were like, "Well, you fought Corporate Kane, you fought the Demon Kane. Now you have to fight Park Ranger Kane." Now you have to fight <laughs> Malibu Kane. Nice. <laughs> Malibu Kane. <laughs> I wanted Ballerina Barbie, but they got me Malibu Barbie. So yeah, Kane, My spidey Kane, sense is tingling. Kane's had a lot of incarnations over the years. Uh, some some of them are best left to to the to the to the ashes of history. Katie Vick is one of them. Yeah. So yeah, that that was the Katie Vick story, and that was also my week. Uh, Lotus, wow. tell me about um how too many games was. Yeah, how do I follow that up? All right, so well, first of all, I'll I'll go in order real quick. I have some actually uh some cool payoff though. First of all, uh, by the time you're hearing this podcast, Little Nightmares will be fully available to the public. Five installments. Have fun. It's a hell of a game. You get to hear uh, 
my semi-glorious playing and Mr. Ryu shitting on me as I do it, Old Man Stompy must love it for that reason. Just as Mr. Ryu, I'm sure, loves anything Old Man Stompy is with me in because Old Man Stompy shits on me as well. Um, I like I like your LPs with uh, Mr. Ryu. They're they're they're, they're really uh, good. Dude, why? why I, I actually I'm, I'm, like all of your your. I, I like all of your your group let's plays. Any let's plays where you, where we play off of each other. Dude, if if you haven't, look into Ride to Hell because that banter it gets yeah. ludicrous. And that's a game uh, nobody wants to play themselves. Exactly. So. <laughs> I, actually, actually, like I, I wish I'm glad you actually played a good game with Mister Ryu this time because that was really the only thing that stopped me from watching the entirety of Ride to Hell and not just the supercut. Just the fact the game was so bad in between. The yeah, fun yeah. Mister Ryu has come on for some crappy games, but uh, Little Nightmares is great, and we've also been recording God of Thunder. Thunder, which I've mentioned is just it's that's not like I, I wouldn't say it's an objectively. I want to watch you play that. Yeah. It's not it's not like an objectively fantastic game, but like I, I like it and it's from my something from your childhood. It's, it's yeah. fun. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I finally finished Zombie, so that took a long time due to just things messing up during the let's play uh, or the stream. Here's the thing with Zombie. Uh, I was actually really close to the end of the game when I had ended my last stream, so. I was like, let's see if we can finish the game now. And then I play for like 10 minutes and I get to the credit sequence and I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'll uh, I guess I'll play something different. But the thing was, I was told that there were multiple endings and I did not have any idea how I would go about getting multiple endings. I basically, the game says, you need to leave this area. And I'm like, okay. And like, and also say, like, you need to get to this helipad so you can fly away. I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I leave my area forget the helipad just credits and i'm like what and the credits go on for fucking ever like i'm letting them sit there for like 10 straight minutes eventually like there's there's a skip option eventually i'm like i'm streaming credits like i'm I, I, i'm killing people here eventually i just I, I, I skip the credits but then gameplay actually continues and i was like whoa <laughs> okay <laughs> and it's the part where i'm supposed to get to the helipad i'm like whoa. all right um, and this is where the multiple endings come in, because now you only have one life. If you die, you get bad ending. So I was playing really cautiously, but there's a part where you can't get to this one stairwell without getting into an adjacent room and falling through a hole in the wall and landing on the stairs. And I fell a little too far, so not only did I injure myself immediately, but I also landed like between two zombies. I was able to take them out, but um, I was like, I gotta heal right now, but healing you can't pause to go into the menu so i got killed and then the bad ending kicked in so uh, so game complete but i don't get the like i didn't really beat the game like there's an achievement for completing the game and i didn't get that so like the bad ending doesn't count here's what pisses me off about that though is that it does the arcade mode thing like that was my playthrough so like you know how some arcade games are like do you want the good ending then play the game through again but this is like a fucking ten hour game. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to YouTube to hell yeah, with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the same thing with me and in, in Far Cry. When I got the bad ending, I was just like, okay. Yeah, you want to play um, all of Far Cry Four again? Okay. Yeah, they locked yeah. me out of all the other options. They didn't yeah. give me like a checkpoint or something. You know? Yeah. So with, with with zombie, like I have to play ten. But the thing with Far Cry is that's a decision. Like with zombie, I have to play ten hours to get a chance at not dying at this one part it's like get the hell out of here i probably could do it but like i'm not gonna find out uh so at least i beat zombie i saw some kind of ending i never thought i would we're good Uh, what was it all man zombie i'm sorry so you've it's reminiscent of like uh i guess the 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 most punishing version of of this i've ever seen is is the tetris the grandmaster (laughs) three you might have seen like where yeah, like, the mini like, game games you, don't you, quick. You, you get through like Grandmaster mode and you finally get your promotion exam to become Grandmaster, which only like five people in the world have ever done. And is this where you have to like make it through the credits? At the yeah, at the end you have to play invisible Tetris <laughs> invisible t- during the credits and like score multiple Tetrises in order to like complete the Yeah. Rating. And yeah, like, the, the the blocks the credits... are insanely fast, they're not colored, and when you drop them, they go completely invisible, so you have to have ridiculous memory. <laughs> it's it's and, like the most demanding thing. And the, the the credits are in a random order except for the last bit, so you don't know how far you are. Oh, oh, oh the actual credits. Yeah, yeah the like, actual it, credits it's... are like in a random order. They thought about that. Like you can't use that as a guideline to understand. That is how long horrific. It's like the scariest thing too. Like, e- like uh, you can look uh, this up on some of the speed runs on Games Done Quick. Uh, even when the people lose, when you see how far they get, it's like 
literally jaw dropping. Like I can't believe this. That's why it was so funny when like the following year someone speed ran uh, Talos Principle, and there are some puzzles to open doors. We have to arrange Tetris pieces in a puzzle to fill a shape. And, like, so he gets through that in, like, three seconds. He's like, Tetris Grandmasters from last year, eat your heart out. It was pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty fantastic. I love that. Um, so, yeah, that was Zombie. Otherwise, after Zombie, I went to Yakuza 0 because even with the ending bit, I was playing for, like, like 50 minutes. I'm like, well, that's not good enough. So I didn't really have another game lined up. So I'm like, let's just do the thing I'm playing, which happens to be really entertaining to watch anyway. So I was playing more Yakuza 0. I wasn't advancing the plot. I was just doing side missions and... Uh, grinding for cash and trying to find stuff so that was entertaining on its own i was training in my various abilities because in yakuza 0 you actually have fighting styles you can select on the fly there are four in the game i have three you start with brawler where you just take really heavy swings and you can grapple with people there's rush where you can't block you instead juke and dodge and you can't grab you just kick to break people's guard and you do really fast incredibly low damage punches that you eventually work people over enough to the point where they're stunned so you can like give them a good crack in the face with a finishing blow and then there's beast where you're slow but you do a lot of grapple attacks um if you press the attack button near an item you just pick it up and immediately swing with it without having to go through the grab animation first uh and your hits are really slow but really strong and i'm growing to like it a little more so I now have to train under, like, three different masters to master the respective styles. That's entertaining. I also got involved in slot car racing because that's a thing in this game. Um, <laughs> there's also disco dancing, which is surprisingly difficult. Uh, there's also... Pool's always been in Yakuza, but now there's a thing called puzzle pool where you have to sink a particular ball into a pocket in one shot without hitting the multiple black eight balls uh, present, and it's like you have one shot it's really difficult even with a video guide it's really easy to mess it up by a little bit um but otherwise there's a new character in the game who's just going to be harassing me throughout the whole thing i think he has a real name but he's just colloquially known as mr shakedown because if you ever pass by him he just beats the shit out of you and takes all of your money but the thing is he's like two heads taller than kiryu like, this guy is a monster. Like, he's he's taller than Saijima from Yakuza 4 and 5. Like, this guy is an actual freaking wow. monster. Like, when I first saw him, uh, like, I'm talking to him from a distance, and he's, he looks similarly sized to Kiryu, but then you realize he's kind of far back, and he just walks up to me. I'm like, oh, shit. Uh, and he swings really slowly, but if he connects, it's like a quarter to a third of your health. And he has Jesus. a couple of moves that, like, he has a couple one-shot moves that are, again, easy to dodge, but, like do not get hit and if he knocks you down if he does the stomp move that kiryu can do I, I don't know if i can increase my health and circumvent this but at least with my health now he just takes me out it's ludicrous so like really easy to avoid but the problem is you can't grab him because he immediately smacks you down and he has super armor so whenever you're hitting him even if he's not blocking he could swing at any second so like the best way i found to fight him is with rush but I do little damage, so I'm just kind of like get in there, hit him like three times, and like run away. So fighting him should be easy, but it's still stressful because you really don't want to mess up. So uh, but for, if, you, if you beat him, so, you get tons of money. <laughs> so for for the people unfamiliar, this is what it's like to play Monster Hunter or Dark Souls like all the time. <laughs> yeah, kind of, pretty much. Like, like yeah, the, like the entire game. Yeah, any monster in Monster Hunter will like four or five shot you. It's just like oh god, especially if you if you fight over leveled ones, then they can really ruin your day. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Monster Hunter is no joke, uh, as cool as it is to watch a talented player. So yeah, I've been working on Yakuza 0. It's it's a lot of fun. I look forward to seeing where it goes. Otherwise, I have two more things to mention. One of them is what, oh man, Stompy teased, too many games. They had an event on Sunday, uh, the time we're recording this, from 12 noon to 6 p.m. It's just a one-day thing for that smaller period of time. This was the first time they've tried this. It's like a, a holiday thing where they're doing stuff for charity, but they still have a dealer's room and everything. So I was all set to go, but my car's battery was just drained, like, completely. Uh... So I'm like, time to go. And, like, I turn the key and I hear that clicking sound. I'm like, ah, son of a bitch. So, um, <laughs> what I've... That's a shame. Yeah, that sucked. So what I found... So I didn't go. So what I found baffling... And a little disturbing was that my battery, when I got it checked out at a at a dealership, or not not a dealership, but like a car repair place, was um 
in working order, it was just drained. It's not like I had a bad battery. So I was like, what the fuck? Um, my, my, my dad took a look under the hood, and he saw that um, the piece of metal that goes around one of the battery's contact points had gotten corroded. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe it wasn't holding a contact, and the battery was just draining. I hope, sure. to, I hope to God that that was the problem, because if so, problem solved. But that was still really disturbing. But there is a silver lining to this. Like, I don't usually go out, even on extended weekends. <laughs> like, and this is the one time I was going to go out. Like, but any other weekend of the year, I might not have gone out. Thank God, even though I missed a good time, thank God, of all of the days I could have discovered my battery was dead, it was that day. Because tomorrow for us, but yesterday for the people listening to the podcast, Monday, I have to administer a final exam and it would have been a fucking catastrophe if I'd found out my car was dead that morning. Like, sure. that would have been a nightmare. Wow. Uh, that would have been a nightmare. Like, there have been times where I've had to miss class before, and it sucks, because if you only meet two or three days a week, that's a big deal. But, like, you could take one hit per semester, maybe two, but, like, but a final exam, like, how do you make that up? Like, because with, with me, when I administer my final exam, a lot of classes, in fact, almost all of them, administer final exams during what's called finals week. Like, after everyone's classes end, there's, like, a week grace period or so to study for stuff, and then the next week is actually taking the final exam. But my final exam is on the last day of class. So, like, what am I supposed to do if I miss that? So, um, if I had known about it well in advance, I could easily tell a substitute, give them the, give them the test, and then just sit there. But if I find out, like, an hour before class starts, like, that is a disaster. So, as much as it sucks to miss the Too Many Games event, better I found out today than tomorrow. Because that would have been a fucking calamity. So, there is that at the very least. Uh, so, I guess we'll see where that goes. The good news is after Wednesday, uh, my work is done. I'm on winter break, so that'll be nice. Now, here's, here's a, a really cool announcement I have, actually. And I haven't told anybody about this, so you, you guys, I think, are going to be rather interested, as well as uh, perhaps the listeners. Whoa. So, no, just you wait. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to MAGFest in a few weeks, right? It's like two or three weeks, uh, I guess. Sure. I guess, I guess three weeks. And, um, by the way, again, good thing I found out now before MAGFest, because I'm going to be one of the drivers. Uh, enjoy a three-hour trip where we're staying for four days with a, you know, <laughs> dead battery. So... Here, here's the thing about MAGFest. Um, I had applied, you, you know, last year for the previous MAGFest. Advice, you were in on this. Um, we wanted to apply for, a, like, a panel to see if we could host a panel that was describing, like, making... I forgot what it was. It was making podcasts or making less... I think it was podcasts, right? We had, mm -hmm. we had considered talking about less playing, but it was like, nah, describing podcasts. Uh, the panel didn't end up getting accepted. Um, I'm sure tons of people apply to panels. So, you know, what are you going to do? But, um... Th this time, I had tried applying for a panel where, like, y you guys remember my, my Resident Evil 2 version comparison video? And oh, sure. I I've been talking a bunch of times on the podcast that I've wanted to make a Resident Evil 1 comparison video. And I'm, I'm making footage. I'm st I stopped working for a long time. I got more footage. I stopped working for a long time. I'm working on a script. You know, I finally recorded my video portion. da 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 da, -da. But, like, uh... Well, it turns out that, like, I, I applied to do a panel where I would show that video, the Resident Evil 1 video, and it actually got accepted. So That's awesome. Yeah, so, like, I've been on panels before, but it was, like, a massive group Q&A session, basically, where, like, a bunch sure. of different people and I chilled out, and people in the audience were just like, what do you think of this? And either one of us would answer, or all of us would, depending on the nature of the question. I've never actually hosted a panel I think that's amazing. Closest, yeah, like I think the closest we've come, Vice, is like you at the library, like where like you had yeah. your forum to do your thing. So with this, uh, I'm basically gonna just play the video, and then if there's time for a Q and A afterward or like or whatever, then there'll be that. So the good news and bad news for me is that it will be done by January fourth because. It had damn well better be. <laughs> yeah. Because I like I, now. I got now. You have a natural deadline. I, I have three weeks, which should be long enough, realistically speaking. But like, I need to put this shit together, and I have a lot 
to put into this video. Like, uh, you'll also have winter break to. Um, no, I do, but I really, no, yeah, thank God. But like, I I have a lot to put into this. Like, I'm gonna put up a YouTube announcement about this later. But like, you guys have no idea the 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 shit I looked into for for this video. A lot, a bunch of it, like. I didn't even know myself. People, like, told me about some stuff I think I actually discovered myself, or at least, if not discovered it, then, like, didn't see anybody else talk about it. So, like, assuming I put this together on time, which I really, really should, because I'd better, then uh, stuff's going to be really hype for beginning of 2018. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. Last I checked, I don't think Magfest had, a like, a schedule up. If you go to schedule.magfest.org, it's still the 2017 thing, so they're going to get that up later so i don't know when and where this thing's gonna be but uh super hyped about that so that's guess, guess we'll see yeah we'll see where that goes um so yeah that's really excited for you oh yeah thanks i'm i'm excited as well but now i'm nervous because this video should have been done like like half a year ago <laughs> so, like i still need to work on it so i'll i'll get on that so that that's been uh my week how about you vice well, uh, I haven't really played a whole lot of games. I, I really wanted to, to finish uh, Metroid up, and I just didn't have the chance to. I've been really busy this week with work. Um, it's been actually kind of a shame because of it. Um, I just... I really have been under the gun, uh, and, uh, like, Lotus can attest to this. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I had to I had to edit the podcast, and it's just like, dude, I am sorry, <laughs> but I need to eat dinner. Yeah, that was the thing. At it was, you, 10 o'clock at night. That, that, was, that was the thing. Yeah, Vice is like, oh, I'll have it to you, like, tonight. I'm like, okay. And then, like, at 8 o'clock, I PM him. So, like, is there an ETA? And he's like... I'm just getting into the car to go home now. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> I think you're always surprised by the fact that I, I work late nights. Um, I, I always know it's late, but I never really, like, understand. Like, I don't think it sinks in, like, oh, you're still, like, it's, like, 9 o'clock. And you're like, oh, I'm having dinner right now. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I'm a salesperson. So, um, you know, clients don't always... You know, uh, my my clients fall in my lap a lot of times because yeah. I, I I'm a salesperson over the phone. So like I, I go with whatever I have at the time. And certain sometimes I have clients that um you know live across the country. So uh all, sometimes the best way to help them is after after they they come home from work. Well, that means I have to stay extra late. So I you know I don't get home from work. That is true. And, like you can't call people during work hours even though they're your yeah. work hours because everyone's working. I mean, <laughs> Just to give you a, a, an idea, I, 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 I'm in Eastern Standard Time, you know, I'm in, I'm in New Jersey, and uh, I have licenses uh, all around the country. I, I have licenses in 38 states and territories, including Ooh. D.C., um, and uh, going all the way out to, uh, to Hawaii. So uh, I have a, lo- a, a lot of times, you know, people have work as well, so I have to, I have to stay later than they do at their jobs. Yeah. in order to help them so it, it's it it's a tough job and sometimes I, I you know i don't uh despite trying really hard i don't get anything um and that that that's a heartbreaking part about sales is uh you're actually working your hardest when you're not when you don't when you're not busy uh rather you're you're frantically scrambling trying to get a sale yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's tough on me, um, especially with my, my anxiety issues. Um, so it, it's kind of funny that I'm an affable person um, who is good at selling things, but I also have a, 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 a crippling uh, uh, you know, issue with, 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 um, with anxiety. Uh, so I have to fight one thing while, while being really good at another all at the same time. It, it's kind of a weird weird thing like you know you think i would be an introvert but i'm also a highly driven person so a lot of times um i go the opposite direction when i'm scared of something uh i i i fight it head on because in in my experience that's the only way for me to get over it uh so um you know just like old man stompy has had issues with uh with driving you know and and finally was able to overcome it and he i'm very proud of of him of course uh, for for doing so um I, I have, a, you know, a, a social anxiety disorder that I have to fight constantly, and no matter how good at fighting it I get, I, I still have to put maintenance into it, um, and uh, it, it's just kind of funny that my profession 
actively works against me in that way naturally so um and it i'm good at it that, that's another thing you know it's it, so it would be one thing if I was just terrible, I could just drop it, right? But uh, I'm good at it, and it pays the bills. Yeah. I, I've actually uh, made a really good living doing it. Uh, but anyway, uh, a lot of times I I work, you know, f- uh, 50 to 60 hours a week, and um, uh, I don't think everybody quite understands it, uh, um, you know, without having to live with me. Um, so... Um, when I say that I'll do something, <laughs> it's because I want to, and if I don't get to it, it's not because, uh, it's not, uh, you know, any, any streaming that I've always wanted to do or, or anything like that. It's not because I don't want to do it. It's actually because I desperately do want to do it. It's just, um, sometimes at the end of the day, after, after doing all that work, and sometimes I'm still at work, um, I'm mentally exhausted and emotionally exhausted at the end of it. Um... Having said that, uh, I did buy a few things uh, that I did want to mention, and I did uh, a few activities uh, that I thought were really neat. So, um, after a long period of this game uh, being a Vita exclusive, it finally came to uh, PS4 uh, and uh, PC. Uh, Xanadu, uh, Tokyo Xanadu EX Plus came out, uh, which is another lovely Falcom RPG. It's a lot of uh, uh, it's a lot of additions to that title. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, like it, Hyper it, Fighting it, Edition and Knuckles <laughs> featuring Dante the, from Devil May Cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the definitive version, uh, which I'm, I'm very happy has been uh, officially released in English now uh, on PC. I, I believe all Falcom games should be on PC. It, it just feels right. Um, because they, they, they started their business as being the only successful uh, Japanese um, PC game maker. Uh, well, non porn uh pc game maker other than D- doujin games you know they, yeah. they they were the only big company to make a business out of it um so um uh, i i keep playing those games on pc if i can um so i i bought that i haven't had a chance to play it but i'm excited to i mean there are other xanadu games that i want to get to first i want to play xanadu next i know i know they don't have direct connections but you should you should probably watch the movies and to understand what's going on oh. <laughs> and also watch uh, uh citizen kane uh, as well. <laughs> uh listen to but... xanadu by olivia newton john <laughs> well that's what he's referencing okay um the movie xanadu is, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that mm. uh <laughs> and and go to the palace while i'm at it but anyway um... it's, it's, it's just like i mean this is actually for real but like you know before i play the city of lost children on ps1 i should watch the movie it's just like well, uh, that you should. That I actually <laughs> should, yeah. It's just like, oh, man. <laughs> uh, but uh, I I did uh, also buy uh, Dengkukuku, uh, otherwise known as Game Paradise Cruise and Mix uh, for PC, which is a great Jalico uh, classic shmup uh, that was just re-released in HD. Uh, it, it's a it's a homage to, um, to classic uh, shooting games of past and... It has a lot of really cool, like, um, like shmup love to it because the the, the uh, setting is an actual arcade. Uh, so there are other arcade characters in the game. That's pretty uh, while cool. You're playing it and lots of uh, cameos and stuff like that. So I, w- I was really happy that that was finally released. Um, it, it was released on Saturn um, uh, way back when, but having it as a PC, ver- you know, um, HD version, I'm, I'm very happy to have. Mm-hmm. I also um, uh, picked up um, a game that I hope to God that we play at MAGFest because it's going to be a riot. Uh, so a game very similar in the vein of Quop came out on <laughs> Steam called Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy. Uh, has anybody heard of this yet? No. But Getting okay. Over It, is that like a play on words? Like you're climbing stuff? Oh, I, yes, I think I, I, I think I have seen someone play this, but I'll I'll let you describe it. Okay, good so, luck being better than Mount Your Friends, by the way. Oh, this is it, it's similar in in concept, but like it's, I'm okay it's, with this. Yes, okay. So you are a man that looks like he is b- about to be boiled in a cauldron, like it, it's a cauldron full of water, uh, like a black cauldron, uh, with just your head and like just the barely your 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 shoulders. Does it star? Out uh, of it. Does it star Taryn, the uh, assistant pig keeper? Oh uh, man, references to 
obscure Disney movies. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and you're bald, and you have a um, a hammer that is pointy on one side and blunt on the other, okay. like a big sledgehammer. And the object of the game is to use the mouse to control both of your arms to push yourself along and also hook the hammer on various objects and get oh, over them. Oh, it's, like it's like a climbing so, pick scenery. kind of? Yes. Okay. Um, that it, sounds it, In tough. fact, it, 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 even, it even sparks when you put it down. Hey. And the, the game has a... Uh, who I can only guess is the, the game's creator... It uh, is a, sm- a smarmy British person who taunts you and also tells you about the history of games like this uh, while you're playing it. Uh, and he basically tells you that I... Uh, like, the trailer in the game of the game literally says, I I made this for a curious reason, to hurt people. <laughs> like, like it, the game is extremely frustrating. And, uh, like, it uses ultra-precise controls that aren't easy to use. And... and you have to get over things that are not easy to use, and you can u- lose a lot of progress very quickly because the controls are so wonky. Wait, wait, um, is, is this on Steam? Yes, because I, I I could just I, I look forward to seeing like what the Steam reviews say. Because like oh, I, everybody I, loves it. Everybody but, loves it. But like, are there like goofy comments? Because I remember Mount Your Friends had some hilarious comments. Oh no, there it's great. It's like. I wanted to die, so I played this game. Now I want to die more. You know, stuff like yeah, that. Because uh, my, my, my favorite with Mount by... Thumbs my, up. <laughs> nice. No, my, my, fi- my favorite with Mount Your Friends by a million miles was like, my teacher said I would never amount to anything. Well, now I mounted my friends, so who's laughing now? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the greatest thing. <laughs> Uh, I, I also will pick up genital jousting for, uh, for, oh, God. for Magfest too, yeah, which great. is very funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, this game is just one of those games you want to watch somebody play, and it also has, like, a lot of those letdown moments, like, oh, man, he overcame this big, giant thing, and then all of a sudden just ruined ten minutes' worth of work. Yeah. Just by, like, falling down and not, like, doing the just right thing. It's like Legend so, uh, of Kage, you fall down, like, 10,000 trees, and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm looking forward to watching you and Mr. Ryu play this in a, in a group setting. Even though it's <laughs> not a group game, it's best served sure, sure. In, it, as, as, as something you watch watch somebody play. Even even streaming this would be fun, but having other people in the room just, like, laugh and, go, and like, get frustrated with you. Yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. I can't I, I can definitely see that being, like, a a whole room going oh kind of moments yeah. like like the, I think our very first magfest where we were playing uh, Incredible Crisis, the part where you're uh, in the plane trying to shoot like the giant kaiju oh, teddy yeah, bear, that's fun, like yeah. when you get that last hit down, the whole room's like yeah, like that was really gratifying. Yeah. Even though it's a single player game, it was gratifying. I, I can't wait, and it's not a particularly long game, so like uh, you know even when you get past the, the insurmountable odds, yeah, uh, we 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 could fiz- we could probably do it. Um, so uh, I'm very much looking forward to doing that. I just had a couple little things. Um, uh, I was excited to hear that there's a Street Fighter Anniversary Collection coming out that Dude, has every every Street Fighter game. That up shit until this is point hype. Yeah, it. Uh, up until up until. Th- three uh, yeah it has every alpha one. it has like every street fighter 2 it has surprisingly all three versions of street fighter 3 because you only ever hear about third strike anymore um yeah. the, the only things i think it doesn't have are the nintendo switch street fighter 2 with akuma and violent ken and yeah that's a little weird uh they yeah, should be and, putting the most uh up-to-date version of street fighter super street yeah. fighter oh by it. the way it has street, street fighter, fighter 1 2. which is crazy i think that's our yeah. first ever home release and no, that's not true. Oh, it's not? Um, the first ever home releases uh, were on PC, and then uh, the first ever console release was on uh, TurboGrafx-16 CD. Oh, I never know what had consoles ever. Okay. Yeah, never it mind. was called Fighting oh, the... Street for some stupid reason. Oh, that. There is one critical thing that's missing, though, which is the movie The Game, so Captain Sawada is not happening. <laughs> this is bullshit. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to get that because it'll be fun. Um... Uh, I also wanted to mention that uh, I took my girlfriend to. Uh, she had, she's excited to see the Disaster Artist because she is a big James Franco fan, and uh, I was like, "Oh, we have to watch the Room first before we go to the Disaster <laughs> yes. Artist." Yes. So uh, 
in in my opinion, this is this is the way to see it, and she agreed once we had. Um, we went to one of the midnight showings of it uh, on yeah. on Friday night, and uh, I I brought in, of course, a gigantic bag of spoons that I had bought from uh, from Target, and she's just like, oh, "I can't believe you're doing this! I can't believe you're doing this! You're gonna get us in trouble! You're gonna get us thrown out!" And I was like, "No, I'm not. Yeah, this is this is what people come for." And yep. she was just like, no, oh, we're going to get in trouble. Or you, you better ask them whether you could do this. I was like, I'm <laughs> not going to ask them. This is happening. Yeah. And then I go in there, and I start, uh, and, and people are sitting down. It looks pretty civil. But then I was, uh, and then I was like, I just, I was like, ah, screw it. I took out a box, and I was like, does anybody want a spoon with me? Yeah. <laughs> And somebody was like, "Hell yeah!" and grabbed yeah. my box. <laughs> and yes. and my girlfriend's like face palming. I was like, "No, wait." <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 and then every... go I, ahead. I know we've done this before. Like I remember the, the very first time we went to one of the midnight showings of the room. Like we all came with boxes of spoons. We basically bought out like the Kmart and Penn Station. Like all of the yes, spoons. Yes. And like our, one of our other friends came with his own box of spoons. And we went to like a <laughs> restaurant before we went to see the showing. And we all like checked yeah. our oh, bags yeah. of spoons. And, like, we got, we left the restaurant, we were like, hey, is this your bag of spoons? No, it's my bag of spoons. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's all make sure we leave with our own bags of spoons. And I, I swear yes. to God, I, the, the host must have thought that we were filming some kind of, like, candy camera show. Because it was so yeah. stupid. <laughs> And, and and the room hadn't quite. Not only that, but they're disposable. Like 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 we're, you just throw them away and never but, see but, them ever again. But literally, and, and not only and well, not only that though, but like when you bought them and in that restaurant, like no knives, no forks, just spoons. Just spoons. I, yeah. I, I really wish I had bought more spoons. I did not bring enough spoons to the to the. Room. <laughs> what was really funny is I was checking out at the Target with with. Just like, and I I didn't even think to get like a cart or anything, so I just have this like big heaping pile of spoon spoon boxes <laughs> yes. and also like a a a, a six pack of tonic water. It, like, yeah, that like, was, I like, was the alternative. I really I like think, soup yeah. and drinking. I, I think that that because all we wanted to do was buy spoons and snacks. I was fairly convinced the people in the Kmart thought that we were stoned. Yeah, I, I could see that. This yeah. is a fair assessment, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so we go and we watch it, and oh my god, was it fun! Now, uh, like, did, did you did you do it right? Did you only throw spoons when you saw spoons? Yes. No. 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 Like people were like, "Wait for it! Wait for yeah. it! Wait for it!" Um, like they did a couple rituals I had never seen. Uh, like uh, whenever there is a shot of uh, the landscape where where they do like like the ocean or the bay, San yeah. Francisco Bay, uh, they scream out water. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anytime there's water on the screen after that, even like when somebody pours out water, people are screaming water. <laughs> but that's, that's, not even, start... that's, that's not even a weird quirk of the movie, though. The spoons no, are freaking is. weird. No, no, no. There, it is a weird, weird quirk of the movie because there's a lot of shots of San Francisco Bay. Uh, and they're, and they're are, like yeah. prolonged. So that that's what it's pointing out. Okay. So, uh, so, but then I, I extended it. Nobody was doing this. When somebody started crying, I started yelling water. And then by the end of the movie, when somebody's crying good. at the very end, everybody was screaming water. Nice. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, uh, it was it was so much fun. And, uh, you know, people were chucking spoons left and right, yelling at Denny when he doesn't close the fucking door. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, he, just, he just leaves and whatever. He just... leaves the door open in every scene. You know what that, like... remi- you know what that reminds me of? <laughs> but you know what that reminds me of? Like, because it's not real, you don't think to do that unless somebody tells you. It reminds me of Plan 9 from Outer Space where that one detective kept pointing in directions like, with his gun, and it's like, don't do that. <laughs> but uh, people are like, close the fucking door, Danny. Close the fucking door. And That's like, amazing. like whenever they, when anybody closed the door, like people clapped. They were nice. like, yeah, they closed the door. That's great. <laughs> and oh my god, uh, my girlfriend had a blast, a fucking blast. She loved it. She was all into it. She was like, I'm glad I saw it like this because I would have been bored otherwise. Like, oh, like she, she wouldn't have, but it wouldn't have been uh, quite as spectacular. I, I, I think you 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 I think you have a lot of tolerance for shit, and not a lot of other people do. And she doesn't have a tolerance for for being bored by 
bad shit. Like she just doesn't. No, but the thing is, like, th- this is that this movie is like such a non-plot. It's just like the goofy yeah. acting that like anybody can get behind. <laughs> Because, like, there are some movies, like, there are some Mystery Science that, like, I've watched Mano's Hands of Fate, like, that takes, like, I've watched Neil Breen, like, that stuff takes practice. But, like, The Room, you could, you could do The Room. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think, um, we, we had a blast, and now she actually has context for the disaster artist and is really looking forward to, like, how did the fuck did this movie get made? So, um, yeah. uh, like, I... I it, it was just a blast. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but they even knock over the, the spoon picture at the end of the movie and then reset it, like, because it gets, like, knocked down during the fight. That's pretty so good. So you see the spoon for the last fraction oh, of the second. Oh, the non-fight where they're, like, slapping at each yeah. other? Like, chicken, exactly, cheap, at the cheap, party. cheap, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, it was it was just a blast. She had what a, was that? She had so much fun. Um... And th- that's pretty much all I have for this week. We got to get going towards uh, uh, like one quick question. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so we what, can wrap up. But. One one thing I should mention is last week, uh, Lazarul had asked us who would win in a fight, Garion or you know Priscus, Priscus, and man, we were wrong about Priscus. Like he he responded on like uh, on YouTube like. What Priscus are you talking about? Like, you were way off base. And he goes into this description of this Priscus character who's from a game called Sons of Triskelion, which I've never heard of in my life. What? I know. And the funny what thing was... What is that? Yeah, well, well, the, well, this was it what was funny. It has to be funny. on the PC. Well, no, the, fu- the funny thing is, is it's readily available on Steam. I was like, really? <laughs> so, Something so I can actually I get. So I went ahead and, and purchased Sons of Triskelion, this, this like, paragon of, of, of Steam, <laughs> for 89 cents. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Lazarus, Lazarus said it was really good, so he might actually uh, get behind. Uh, stay so behind. I, I don't Are know what sure they're going to him. An, an, an ironic opinion or a serious opinion? Because well, I I, I think it might have been serious because like these guys do like they'll they'll bring up weird stuff like Arcanum, but like they do have a love for it. So a little bit of backstory is that Sons of Triskelion is an RPG maker game made by like an RPG maker shovelware factory called Warfare Studios, and like all they do is make like three hour RPG <laughs> maker games and then shovel them onto Steam for a dollar. And if I didn't game, even know that if the game does reasonably well. That, so like I bought their entire catalog, which is like thirty five games, for like fifteen dollars. <laughs> Because that's I'm not, but you're fueling the machine. That's 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 just bad. Uh, like uh, you're 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 telling them that this is okay. It might be okay. <laughs> well, they, they they made like thirty games, so it's not like 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 something is compelling them to continue. It's not it's not me. <laughs> like I'm not yeah. their I'm not their only source of revenue. Certainly, I wasn't before this. Like somebody must be buying these games. Yeah. The the whole the whole uh the whole argument uh, I can buy stock in this company because other evil people are buying the stock in this company too. So I have <laughs> yeah, the, little, very little effect on the stock price the, the, even the, though I'm the supporting that, the company. The pro- the problem with that is that is that eventually somebody's left like holding the bag with this like shit stock with an inflated value and it's usually what causes like large scale market crashes on on the stock market. But what happens here? Like Steam is already bloated to the gills with shit. <laughs> you know, it like, like I, I, re- I realized when I brought this up that like Dracologist might actually get a little annoyed because he has this like laundry list of amazing Steam games in every genre that he always recommends to us whenever he's on. Oh, his he podcast. like sh- he he dives deep into shit though. Yeah, uh, I know. He, like, like he he dives real deep into it. Yeah, but his recommendations are usually solid, and then he gives them to us, yeah. and I acknowledge them, and then I never play those games, but I will fucking play Sons of Triskelion for. <laughs> For half an hour because of a throwaway comment and it, because it bothered me that I didn't know who Priscus Augustus was. I had actually, like, <laughs> I had actually found a character named Priscus in a different indie game and I made a mention what? of it in uh, in one of the conversations in the comments that Lazarus had and it turns out that I was wrong. Like, that wasn't the same Priscus that he was referring to. <laughs> I, I, like, I really tried hard to find this one and but I guess obviously not... And, like, I play RPG Maker games if they're decent. There are certainly some, some really good ones uh, out there. I think, Sure. Yeah. There's some good stuff out there. Yeah, I think, I think Lisa. Uh, I think Lisa is an RPG maker game, and that's like pretty out there. Uh, yeah, I think Undertale is a game maker game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, not that. Um, it, Shut up and jam Gaiden is a game. Shut maker up and jam Gaiden, one of the best games ever made. Yeah. If you ask me. So like, it's not yeah. a. It's not a. Uh, the, that, that Super Talking Time Brothers I told you about is a game maker game originally. Uh, it's like it's one of the best Mario fan games I've ever played. Um, yeah. So, but like, this is just. I think it's just garbage. I. 
<laughs> I, I, I played it for about a half an hour. I will say that Priscus Augustus starts off the game by beating three bears in the gladiator arena, despite seeming to be a normal human. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> It's so like wow. the, it's 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 a it's an RPG. A human yeah. can't even really beat an, a bear. Even if you have a gun, it's hard to beat a bear. I don't know, dude. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, Takamura beat a bear to death in Hajime no Ippo. And, and like even that no, is like one of the most controversial <laughs> scenes in the anime because people still yeah. believe he should be able to do that. He kept point. Uh, yeah, and this is like a pro boxer punching it repeatedly in the temple. Mm. So, so yeah, Priscus Augustus seems like a real badass. Uh, I don't know if he would beat Garion because Garion is like actually a superhuman from Dark Savior. Oh. Um, okay. I think. Uh, you have a you have a uh, a knowledge of those. You those actually Iowa know Dark RPGs. Savior. <laughs> yeah, you, you you know about the 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 Land Stalker um, like spinoffs uh, way we, more uh, than I. Actually, are we talking? Like, are we talking really about Garion? Yeah, Garion from Dark Savior. It actually really. No, I was I was just gonna say like our. It's like the only game I own for the Saturn that I haven't actually played, and I might bust it out uh, in my new apartment. That I, only I, was, I was gonna say, like, are, are we talking Garion with or without the powers of jalapeno juice? I mean, jalapeno juice is just poorly translated, like alcohol. It's jalapeno juice. <laughs> yeah, jalapeno juice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh no. But uh, so no. The other question, like the question for this week, is uh, is actually from Dracologist himself. What are your thoughts on a horror game using efficient but quirky weapons? Wait, wait, I, wait a second. Uh, I, I think it's also kind of funny that he is one of our guests, like, and he asks, like, questions. <laughs> yeah, well. Like, been on, like, what if I added questions to our... <laughs> I, I would love to ask questions. I have all kinds of questions. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in any case, though, like, yeah. you know, so, I mean, you, you could stretch the definition of horror. Like, some games, like, like Doom, I don't know if they're horror horror, but they can have some goofy weapons, like the BFG or stuff like that, like, that are efficient and quirky. But, like... What like I guess depends on how far you take quirky as well, but like, uh, I I think maybe he's talking about maybe uh, like Scissor Man, um, maybe uh, I don't know. That's, that's a quirky weapon, that's like a giant. Not, I guess he he just says user, so I don't know if he means the player character or what. But like I mean I'm maybe I'm off base on this, but I'm thinking something like the the joke weapon, like the finger, like the foam finger in Dead Space Two, but which is a like a new game plus weapon. Uh, I, like, I mean, I guess I'm okay with it if it doesn't break the mood, or if it does, then if it's, like, a New Game Plus weapon, because I don't want, like, to ruin my serious experience. Sure. Like, again, unless the game's supposed to be like that, where it's, like, you know, if, it, if it's, like, blood, where you're just, like, mwahaha, running around and just blowing stuff up, you know? I mean, like, like Dead Rising has full of quirky weapons. Yeah, Dead Rising's uh, kind of hard, but the game's goofy as shit, but that's the game's entire yeah. atmosphere. Like, so it, it like, works for what it is. <laughs> it's a like festival. It's a festival like in, bullshit. Like in Zombie, which is like basically a serious Dead Rising, like if, if I had a goofy freaking like quirky weapon, like it would, take, it would take me out of it somewhat. So I guess it depends on what the game itself is trying to do. So sure. I thought of when this question got asked... Uh, the first thing that came to mind was Silent Hill 4, where, like, scattered all around the game world are, like, golf clubs. Golf clubs. Yeah, and, and like, the power of the golf club is related to, I think, how close it is to the driver, which doesn't make yeah. any sense whatsoever, because they should all be equally shitty at killing zombies. Like, <laughs> yep. Like, golf clubs are really fragile. Like, they're really easy to break. Yeah, you could break them over your... Anybody could break them literally over their knee, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, or at least bend Like, them. a baseball bat or, like, a cricket bat are traditionally used in a lot of these things for a reason they would be great uh, so, yeah and, so and again pri weapon primary we primary weapon in zombie is uh, a cricket bat and the other melee weapon in the game you could find is a spike baseball bat so it's it's problematic i think because uh, when overused because like the whole point of horror games is usually to produce immersion and when you get something like yeah. that yeah. it's like the, one of the number one reminders that you're playing a video game and it does like take you a little bit out of it yeah, well, again, that's why I support New Game Plus, where you have, like, goofy bullshit, like the lightsaber in, uh, in Silent Hill 3. Um, yeah, you know, do whatever also, you want uh, once like the story's Mega Man, over and it's just video games. M Mega Man X Buster in, in, <laughs> in Dead Rising. So, oh, yeah, and it shoots little, like, tennis balls or whatever, like little foam yeah, balls. Yeah, but you can get, find a real one in the New Game Plus. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, you can find a real one. Yeah, it's it's great. And then like other one, other su uh, successive uh, sequels, 
have have even more ridiculous stuff. You could you, you could get like the whole the whole costume and, the, and hey. like a, a zero. You could get a zero saber, like a real one later nice. on in, in one of the games. Like you, you, they're they're those games are great. I, I love that, and it gets even more ridiculous. So like yeah, so. in Dead uh, Dead Space, I think is an interesting example of where it kind of like splits the middle. And like Isaac Clark, he's an engineer. He's improvising almost mm-hmm. the entire way. Like the weakest weapon is the yeah. actual the only thing in the game that's actually a weapon, like the military pulse rifle in the first game. Everything, yeah, you don't want to use that. Yeah, everything else is a is like an improvised tool that a he's tool. Used to carve up the zombies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. His first laser cutter, like you can. Well, there's an achievement for beating the game with it, but like I almost beat the game with just that. Like it's that's great. a really, that's it's a really, really cool good weapon. It's a circular saw that shoots lasers. It's extremely efficient and extremely quirky by horror game standards, and even by like standard professional like like first person shooter standards. Yeah. What 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 was great about that game was the like they also gave you an unconventional target on on humanoid enemies. yeah limbs yeah. yeah you you need to sever their their arms and legs off rather than their head um which you know what is complete opposite of any other zombie yes yeah, that's the like hardest that. target to shoot on anything like you're supposed to go yeah. for the chest or the head yeah. well the the headshot is is typically you know the weak point in any shooting yeah. game yeah. So so and especially zombie games because the in in zombie, you know, greater lore, you know, in in almost any movie or anything, the only way to stop a zombie is to like decapitate them. Yeah. Um and there that, that that's pretty much a universal rule uh in across even like the ones that aren't technically zombies, you know, like like you know, uh like 28 days later uh you know, um infected or whatever you know like a headshot yeah, even will even kill them. evil as a virus yeah. it's like no shut up there's zombies <laughs> yeah no no they're they're it's zombies i mean and like same goes for the the, the, the last them. of us yeah. like you're, yeah the last of us you're not fooling me there's zombies shut up yeah no it's actually a cordyceps parasite it's a zombie yeah no any 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 human that that comes by in crowds uh, that and tries to them. bite you. Yeah, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, fuck off. No, no, actually, yeah. it's the plant spores and fa- it's a zombie. Yeah, no. But the, no. the other it, like, I would think of is is uh, a case where the characters are supposed to be very powerful, but you're facing like cosmic horrors. So, like, I would also think yeah. of like Shadow Hearts and like that mythology. Where I gotta play those. Yeah, the first couple games they definitely have their moments of levity. Some of them are extremely goofy, especially Shadow Hearts Two is like really goofy at certain parts. Like some of the weapons that the that the vampire professional wrestler uses are insane. One of them is like actually a spaceship from another planet that he just like picks up. All the people are tiny, and he's like <laughs> he's like reached, reached a mutual agreement with the spaceship that they won't blow up the planet. They'll only help him blow up the enemies. That's but, like, amazing. Parts of it are also like really, especially the first game. Parts of it are also like actually kind of scary because they're taking on like 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 citywide or cosmic horrors. That's I, I I never knew anything about Shadow Hearts, so now that makes me want to play it. Like I only have the first one, and what are there like four? There's yeah, there's or three. There's, there's three, three of games them. plus some um, Kudelka, which is a uh, which yeah, is Kudelka's a, a, a PS One game. Yeah. yeah, so there's Kudelka, Shadow Hearts, Shadow Hearts New Covenant, I think, and what's the other one? Is a uh, New World, I think. New, new World, New yeah. World, and New Covenant. Okay. Uh, well, it's it's Covenant and then New World. Mm-hmm. Oh oh, just Covenant and the New World. Okay okay okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, a lot of people consider the third one to be the best. Um, second, like second they one. progressively get better. Second or the second. Second one. one is the best, definitely. Okay. okay. Like they're, they're, the they're, description they're, sounds great by itself. They're all excellent. The first one is kind of eh. Kudelka is a very strange game. It's you know it's like yeah. it, it doesn't quite can't quite decide if it wants to be survival horror or a traditional Eastern RPG. An RPG. And it I heard about it that. Yeah. But this, and but the first the first game is pretty good. The second game is like absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best RPGs on the PS2. Nice. Third game is still pretty good. Some people, some people love the third game as well, but uh, some people like thought that it went too goofy. I guess is is some well, of the, it's it's it, it feels the like the story completed itself in a pretty satisfying way wow. in Covenant. So the third game was somewhat unnecessary, and it just didn't. It's didn't, like a guidance. It it was sufficiently detached from the other games that that um that it just didn't have the same impact to me. Uh, I'm not okay. certainly gotcha. if if I had played them in no particular order, I probably would have also liked the third game quite a lot. It has the spirit. Certainly, it maintains the spirit of the games. Okay. Gotcha. Well, having said all this, this has been yeah. an amazing, amazing uh, episode. Uh, but uh, we're we're running a little long in the tooth here, so that that'll be the show for this week. 
Uh, we want to thank our fans who contributed questions, uh, especially, uh, you know what? Get Esoteric with us, please, uh, because That's I fine. love this shit. I love hearing about, like, a character from a bullshit game that nobody would have ever played. Uh, I, I, I love hearing this shit stuff, so please go go ahead and, and rock our world with these questions. Go ahead, because I love it. Um, uh, keep us supplied with these awesome topics by submitting questions of your own on our YouTube and SoundCloud pages. While they're Please give us lo- um, thumbs ups. Uh, let me see if I can read. Uh, thumbs ups, <laughs> likes, and five star ratings on iTunes. It helps us promote and spread awareness of the show, and any bit of encouragement helps keep the show going. You can also catch us on Thursdays on our sister podcast, Reactive Consciousness, the de- in depth uh, podcast about this week in our lives. Uh, finally, you can friend me as Vise the Hold on Steam, PSN, Xbox Live, and Twitter. And oh, can- and BattleNet. Yeah, battle.net, yeah. And you could follow me on my YouTube channel, Lotus Prince. You can contact me on Twitter at, at Lotus Prince. And finally, if you are interested in seeing my videos early, getting in on exclusive live streams, or even selecting upcoming games for me to Let's Play, then perhaps consider swinging by my Patreon, which can be found at patreon.com slash Lotus Prince. Uh, and lastly, you can find me as Old Man Stompy on most major gaming and social media networks, except for Steam, where we can have a discussion on only the most tasteful wrestling angles. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we will catch everybody on Thursday. Have a good day. Until next time, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.